chapter of Romans, as we're getting into this life being led by the Spirit, and what Paul says, I say to you, walk in the Spirit, we are becoming intimately familiar with what Scripture is talking to us in regards to our flesh and the Spirit. As you can remember from the first chapters of, of Romans, we're talking about the law, talking about how the law wasn't given to us to save us. It points out our sin, how the law was not able to bring us to salvation, how our flesh, looking in back in, into chapter 7, how Paul is saying, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of flesh? At one hand, he wants to follow God's law. He wants to be obedient, but he says, I find another law living inside of me as well. The law of the flesh pulling me down, causing me to do those things I do not want to do. Church, if you have not understood it up to this time, let's make it completely clear. There are two different laws working in our lives and in this world. One of them is called the law of the flesh, the law of sin, and the other one is the law of the spirit. Now we are moving from the law, from the flesh, and now Paul is saying you need to walk in the spirit. Because let me share with you real quick, church, unless you walk by the Spirit, your life is an empty vessel. You are bankrupt spiritually before God. And oh my goodness, it's an empty lifestyle that you live. What does Paul say? Romans chapter 8. Let's go back to verse 1 again. We talked about it a few weeks ago. Let's get to it again. Verse 1 of Romans 8. Therefore, now there is no condemnation for those in Jesus Christ. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemns sin in the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering in order that the law's requirements would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Now in this chapter, in the first, we're going to look at just the first 17 verses here in Romans chapter 8. In this small passage of Scripture, Paul mentions the flesh 13 times. I think there's something to be paid attention to, church, in our spiritual lives. There is such a thing in the lives of every single person who's ever lived on this world. The flesh is a real thing. And I'm not just talking about your skin and bones. Scripture here talks about the flesh, and Paul is reminding us we cannot, as believers, be walking in the flesh because we have been set free from the law of the flesh. Now we walk in the Spirit. Now, 13 times Paul points out the flesh. I had a boss one time. He would mention something to me, and and I would pay attention to it, listen to it. But you know what? If he mentioned it two times, I better pay attention. Because it was something that was in his mind. It was something that was important to him. And if I didn't pay attention to it, he would come back later, and he'd say, Dave, wait a minute. I told you about this. we got to do this. Paul mentions the flesh 13 times. We have been commanded to walk in the Spirit. Let's look at the the walk of the Spirit and the walk of the flesh. To have a relationship with God requires that the law must be fulfilled. 
The church, if someone ever comes to you and tells you, be it a pastor, be it an evangelist, be it a Sunday school teacher, be it a third grade student coming out of children's ministry, whatever it is, if they say the Old Testament doesn't have any relevance to your life, run away from them as fast as you can and say, get behind me, thou unclean spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, we study the entire Bible from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. It all has relevance, and it all has purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it would be nigh to impossible to understand the full counsel of God without understanding the God of the Old Testament. He's the same God of the New Testament. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's so much in just by looking at the sheer volume of Scripture in the Old Testament, it would be foolish not to pay attention to the Old Testament in the Bible. Now you say, Pastor, how do I get beyond all the wherefore twos and the here thou arts and so begot so and so and begot so and all the begots and the begats and the oh, have mercy on me, O Lord. Church, dig into what God is about even in the Old Testament. Yes, there's some things that are kind of thick. Yes, there are things that are some kind of, kind of tedious. You know, the whole book of Leviticus, all the, the rules about sacrifices and this here and blood over there, whatever. Leviticus, it's nothing more than understanding how a sinful cre- a creation can live in the presence of a holy creator. The whole entire law, and Paul's been pointing it out to us chapter by chapter here in Revelation, that the law must be fulfilled for us to have fellowship with God Almighty. Before Christ, however, we could not fulfill the law because of our flesh, because of our sinful nature. Paul points out, he said, you know what, don't think that the law is bad because it points to God and says, good luck, hope you make it there someday. Hope you can work hard enough, hope you can do enough good deeds for someday for God to say, wow, I'm so impressed. Church, that will never happen. We could not fulfill the requirements of the law, but still the law was set. And it must be fulfilled for us to have a relationship with God. Now, if you're here this morning and you're saying, Pastor, how in the world can that happen? I wasted my time. I should have gone to IHOP this morning. Why did I come to a place to get so depressed and to get so beaten down on? Could have gone and had the pancake special. Hold on a second, church. Hold on a second, sir. Hold on a second, ma'am. I've got good news for you. This is why the Bible, this is why the, the gospel is called the good news. Because guess what? Jesus fulfilled the law by being that sin atonement, by being that sin offering for us. Look in verse 3 again. He condemned sin in the flesh. And this is God by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. Amen. Where you were not capable of fulfilling the law, where you were not capable of even keeping one command for one period of your life, God did everything through Christ Jesus and he became the perfect sacrifice for our sin. Church, it's an understatement to say Jesus did it for you. But it's true. Jesus did it for you. Sin was condemned. The requirements of the law were fulfilled through Christ. And now when we walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, we have that sacrifice applied to our life. And the blood of Jesus washes away our sin. It doesn't cover us the way the Old Testament sacrifices did. 
The Old Testament sacrifice just took care of sins one time for a year, but it had to be repeated over and over again. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got good news for you. Here's the gospel. Christ died once for all, for all your sins, past, present, and future. And Paul is pointing out to us, we now walk in the Spirit because of this reality. Before Christ, you walked in the flesh. Let's go on, look at it again. Verse 5, you are what you are walking. Listen to this, church. Verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh have their mindset on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit have their mindset on the things of the Spirit. You get the picture here, something's different now. Something's happening that's, that hasn't happened before in your life. Verse 6, now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile toward God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. For those who are of the flesh cannot please God. Our mindset now as believers, God calls us, he says, set your mind on the Spirit. No longer on the flesh. Now, church, understand we have the calling of God to place ourselves and to walk daily in the Spirit and to push aside the temptations of the flesh. Before I came to Christ, Scripture here says the mindset of the flesh is death. My mind was set on things of the flesh. I looked at God from time to time and said, oh, that's great. The big man upstairs, good for him. I'm doing my thing over here. Scripture even goes on to say it's impossible for those who have their mind set on the, on the flesh to submit to God's law. Indeed, they are unable to do so. Church, one question for you. Here's an easy one. What do you think is the mindset of those in the world? Is it not obvious? The mindset of the flesh, again, Paul gives us a list. The things of the flesh. Hostile to God. Cannot please God. Death. Church, this isn't, isn't physical death. This is spiritual death. And the thing the world doesn't realize that the enemy wants them to be so naive about death works its way. It works its fingers into every part of your life until it has its complete and total fulfillment in your physical death and your spirit is condemned to eternal death. But... Those who have their mind set on the Spirit, they think about the things of the Spirit. The mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. We are able now to submit to God's law. And ultimately, there's eternal life. The church understand this reality. Okay? This is a reality. If you have the mindset on the Spirit, you will struggle with the flesh. Again, I'm sorry to, to, to bust your bubble. We still from time to time, because we are living in this body of sin, we're living in the sinful world, there are times we will struggle with the flesh. As a young man in high school and college, struggling and striving to set my mind on those things which are good and pleasing and perfect and righteous. Church, it was a struggle. It truly was a struggle, I have to admit. And you know what? Even A.D., even after the ceremony with my beautiful wife, 
I find that I'm still struggling with sin. Now sin has morphed itself from struggling with the things that I see to struggling with the things of my mind. There are times I don't feel like getting up in the morning. Anyone else feel like that at all? Praise God that you're here at church. May you be blessed the rest of the day. I struggle with the things of the flesh that still say, you know, Pastor, you can take it easy. Don't get yourself all upset about this lost world. They're going there. Their mind is set and made up anyway. Church, no. As we talked about last week when Pastor Ernest was sharing with you, God has called us to love one another, to see the value in those who are not exactly like we are, who maybe don't look like us, act like us, talk like us, walk like us. We still have a responsibility to put value on those individuals and say, because God values you, I value you as well. You know, church, here's the hard thing to do. We may be tended to pass off this attitude as being spiritual, but it is not. Even if someone who you are speaking with, who you are trying to witness to, who you are trying to be a godly example to, does not come to Christ, we are still called and commanded to love, regardless of what they do. Because guess what? That's what Jesus did with each and every one of us, did he not? While we were unlovable, while we were sinners, while we completely rejected him, God sent his son to die for us. Ooh, talk about the war of the flesh. It, it's real, church. It's real. Verse 9, Paul goes on, he says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Indeed, the Spirit of God lives in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal, mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. Church, there's the eternal life peace right there. The mindset on the spirit, the one who has been born again, the one who makes that commitment and he bows his knee before the God of heaven and says, God, it's not about me anymore. It's about you. Did you catch that line, church, in the, in the praise song we sang just a bit ago? I'm coming back to the heart of worship because it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things that I've been doing. I'm sorry, Lord, for the focus that I've had upon me, upon my voice upon my talent, upon my presence. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Church, God calls us to walk the walk of the mind of Christ. And to pay attention to the things of the flesh that want to squeeze the spirit out, that want to choke out God's voice that we hear, the voice that we hear with our, our mind but our heart understands. Paul says, remember, you are no longer of the flesh, but now the spirit lives in you because of Jesus Christ. You know what, church, here's the, here's the best news, the best news of all. Paul talks about the flesh 13 times here in these 17 verses. He talks about the spirit 14. One more. 
You know what, as important as it is to understand the, the, the struggles we have with the flesh, as important as it is to stay on top of it, to never give up, you know what, the Spirit of God lives in you when you make a decision to give your life to Christ and you set your foot upon the path of life and God's Word says now you are not alone. You do not walk alone. Look at this. Verse 12, so then brothers and sisters,